Hi, I'm Aisha Fermansky with Beachucation.com, and in this class today, I'm going to show you a simple soldering technique that's going to help you make a million stacked rings. So let's get started. The materials you'll need for today's project are a variety of solderables and small blanks, sterling silver round wire, in today's class I used 14 gauge, but you can use anything 18 gauge and thicker. These are some of the tools we'll be using in class. Bench block, pro polish pad, steel ring mandrel, plastic mallet, ruler, fine tip permanent marker, and a sandbag. Riveting stake, course file, and this great tool, which is optional, the miter jig. Ring bending plier, medium wrap and tap, chain nose plier, and I use these heavy duty flush cutters in the class today, but you can use any heavy duty flush cutter. Quench cup and tweezer, kiln brick, third hand, paste solder in easy and hard, solder pick, solder wire in easy, and a non-combustible work surface, a butane torch, safety glasses, flux brush, flux, and filtered butane. For cleaning your pieces after soldering, you'll need a few things. Ultra-fine steel wool, or a brass brush used wet with soap, citric pickle with a pickle pot, or you can also use Penny Bright. The first step to making a ring is doing a little bit of math. I know for a lot of you, this class starting and seeing math was maybe not your dream, but I'm gonna walk you through it. It's super simple, so let's, let's just dive right in here. So I'm going to make a size six ring today with round wire that is 14 gauge. So what I'm gonna do is I take the inner diameter for a size six ring, which is 16.51, and I add the thickness of the metal, 1.5. 63 millimeters, which is the thickness of our wire, which equals 18.14. And then you're gonna multiply that by pi, which gives us 56.95, which gives you the total length that you're gonna cut your material down to. Now this is a pretty precise number, so I'm just gonna round up and make that 57. You can find a handy table that gives you all the US ring inner diameter sizes and all the details on this math under the instruction section. As you see, I've measured and marked at 57 millimeters and I wanna point out here, see how this little end is popping up like that? You really wanna make sure that this is exact. So I'm just gonna push that down to show that it's exact. Ring sizing is very, very, um, precise, half a millimeter or a full millimeter will bump you into a different ring size. I'm gonna bring in my heavy duty flush cutter here. This is my favorite cutter. And we're using pretty thick wire here today, so I wanna remind you to cut far back in the jaws. You don't wanna cut out in the tip here. It's not the strongest place on the cutter. So let me get this all lined up for you. I wanna show you here that I'm placing the cutter and even though the handle appears to be coming out at an angle, can you see how nice and straight the wire cut edge is to the line of wire? This is where you wanna be. Now we have this really nice razor flush cut edge. I wanna bring in the file and do a little cleaning up. You can see here, you see that little line when the two blades pass one another. They leave this just this little hair of a line and I'm gonna remove it using a file. Now sometimes when you file just 
up here in the air unsupported. It's really hard to keep a flat and straight line. So I'm going to show you a couple tricks. You can use the handy dandy riveting stake. Now you find the hole that fits your wire and poke it through. Now, keeping in mind what I just said about removing metal, we don't want to remove a lot of metal, right? Because then our ring will be too small. But you can support the wire. Let me angle this so you can see it. You can support the wire inside the riveting stake and just have that little bit sticking out so you can feel it. And then take your file and remove the excess. Another tool you can use is the miter jig. I love my miter jig. Um, you're gonna see this in this class a couple of times. As you see, I've placed the wire through the jig and just have a little bit sticking out here. And then I'm gonna tighten down here, nice and tight. Bring in that file again and just remove the very end. Run my finger across it. That feels really good. So we now have two perfectly flat and flush ends. Here's one of my favorite parts of this process is shaping the ring in preparation for soldering. Now you would think that we would wanna make this into a perfect circle, but we actually don't. And it actually doesn't even really matter that much what shape it is. Um, at this part, the most important part is that the two ends come together and meet nicely together. You've noticed while I've been talking, I'm already manipulating the wire and I'm just starting to add a curvature into the center and I'm using the medium wrap and tap to pull the one end inwards like that. Flip it over and do the same thing on the other end. What I'd like to really press at this step is that this is not a fast part of the process. This is really just a lot of tweaking and torquing um, and, and getting those two ends to meet. So let's just work on that here for a little bit. That end's looking pretty good. Let's get this other side in. I must admit, I may have put on too much hand lotion here. This is a little slippery. We're getting there and getting warmer. I'm not gonna bring in my chain nose here. Just start to move the two ends together. Kind of like opening and closing a jump ring. All right, here we go. We are getting close. Can you see that little gap? So I got a little bit of work to do. Bring my wrap and tap back in here. And I like to build tension by crisscrossing the two ends, passing them past each other, and then pulling it back together. You can probably hear the clicking as they pass back and forth. Get in there with your hands if you need to. Filling that tension and working it back and forth. And that looks pretty good. And remember, the success to a great solder seam is two flat flush ends together with no gaps. To hold up my ring while I solder, you'll notice here I have this notch carved into my kiln brick and it's very easy to do with a tweezer or any other little sharp point. You just take your tip and carve into the soft stone. You can do this on charcoal as well. 
I'm first going to show you how to solder using solder paste. Here's my little solder paste. I'm using Easy Solder Paste, or also known as Soft. This has the lowest um, flow temperature, and why not? Because we're not going to be introducing any other solder to this piece. So this is actually quite a bit. I would recommend putting on maybe the equivalent of what would be maybe a size 11 seed bead. If you wanted to get really particular, maybe a size 10 seed bead. It's just a little dollop. I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit. So I know you can't see me, but I have my hair pulled back and my safety glasses on because safety is always first, right? And let me walk you through what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna ignite my butane torch and then I'm gonna slowly heat the ring. I'm actually gonna have the flame pretty far back. This ring is pretty small, so we don't want to shock the metal. So keeping in mind, just lightly warming in a circular motion then the binder is going to burn away. So you're going to see a little bit of smoke and then there'll be a little sneaky little flame, which is my indicator to move in closer with my heat and focus on the seam. The reason I'm talking you through this now is that it's going to happen pretty fast. So let's turn down the lights in the studio so you can see the action a little bit better. This is one of my favorite parts, the quenching. I know this is not real pretty right now. We've got um, fire scale all over, but I wanted to show you that the seam is closed. And next I want to show you how to solder using solder wire. Now I'm going to show you how to solder the ring seam using wire solder. First I'm going to apply a little bit of flux on the seam, the top and the bottom here. Not too much because the solder will flow where the flux is, so you don't want to make a, a big old mess. Now let's talk through this a little bit because it's going to happen really fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignite the torch and I'm going to slowly in a circular motion heat the ring heating it consistently. Now, just as it starts to get warm, I'm gonna bring in the solder wire and I'm gonna to touch it to the seam. So as the ring heats up and, and gets to temperature to melt the solder, it'll flow. Now, there's a happy medium between, oh, it started to flow, and then pulling away, and oh, it started to flow, I'm just gonna let it continue to flow and go forever. I'm going to turn down the studio lights here so you can see more closely. worked pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and quench it and then we'll bring up the house lights so you can get a nice look. Here is the solder seam. Once again not so pretty but I'm going to clean it up and we'll move on to the next step. Let's now shape the ring. I'm slide this on a steel ring mandrel here and pull it down as far as I can. And I'm going to lightly tap it with a plastic mallet. Really briefly, I want to touch base and talk about the fact that this is now really soft because we heated it with a torch, it's now annealed. 
Most likely, while shaping the ring into a true round shape, it's going to grow about a quarter of a size. This is something that you can just take note of while you're making your first rings and make adjust adjustments um, in your original measurement for the next round. I just continue to lightly tap. This is not a heavy handed task. Sometimes I like to take it off and flip it around just to make sure it's consistent. Take it off and check it here. Almost there. This is looking pretty good. I want to show you a little something here. From the side, it's a little wavy. It's not on a flat plane. So I'm going to bring in the bench block and we're going to give it a couple, couple whacks. I've placed the ring on a bench block and this is a good example of what happens to a well-used uh, or well-loved bench block. See all those little dings and nicks? I don't want those to transfer to my metal. So what I do is I take a pro polish pad and I just lay it down on the bench block. This puts a little buffer between the soft metal and the bench block. And then I'm gonna give it a couple wax. Flip it around. It's pretty much all it takes. Let's put it on the ring mandrel and see what size it is. Remember what I said about the stretching. So remember we are making a size six. So let's see how this played out. Six and a quarter. So the ring stretched a quarter of a size. So next time I made a ring, if I needed to be a really specific size, I would make an adjustment in my math. Here is the finished ring. I think it looks pretty good. Turned out pretty great. Here's the little seam. You can kind of see it. Now, if you had excess solder, say a mound here on the outside or on the inside, you could use a fine grit sandpaper, such as 400 grit or even finer, to just rub away the excess. You also could use silicone discs with a rotary tool or Fordham. That works super good. This is pretty great. Let's take a look at some other things that you can do. These are some, some rings I made in preparation for this class. I'm super excited how they turned out. The first one on the far left, I used a chasing hammer to create that nice kind of traditional hills and valley texture. The center one, I used our slash stamp to just create some nice defined lines. And the third one, of course, is just plain and simple. I like them together this way. Remember, when you add texture or design stamps to your ring, you're going to want to use a sandbag and a ring mandrel. Thread your ring onto your ring mandrel, nice and tight. Place it on your sandbag, this stabilizes it, and you'll be good to go to work away and rotate. Also, remember, any time you add design or texture, you're dispersing the metal, not removing it, which means the ring is going to grow a little bit more. And you might ask, well, how, how much more is it going to grow? And it's really going to depend on how much stamping and how much texturing you add to the ring. This is an example of the next technique I'm going to teach you. We're going to start with the ring that you just learned how to make, but we're going to add a solder bolt to the top. Isn't that cute? It's our little classic heart. 
So let me show you how to do that. Here I've started by making a ring, just like we did in the previous step. The only difference is I used hard solder when soldering the seam together. The reason is, is because I'm going to use soft or easy solder to solder the triangle on and I don't want to reflow that seam. I have the ring held in a third hand and the solderable triangle placed here on the kiln brick. Let me show you how to get this all set up. I'm going to take a little bit of solder paste. It's actually quite a bit, but let's see here. Transfer it on to the back of the triangle. It's very small. And then I'm going to move my ring in place. Now, can you see the space between the triangle and the ring? I really want them to be sandwiched and laying right on top of each other. So what I do is I pull the third hand aside and I push it down just a little bit and then bring it back, placing the ring right on top of the triangle. These little precise things sometimes take a little bit of fudging. There we go. That looks great. To walk you through this now, I'm going to ignite my torch and I'm going to slowly heat the piece in a circular motion making sure that the piece is consistently heated. And then when the binder and the flux burn away, I'm gonna focus my heat on that little bit of solder and the solder is gonna flow. It's gonna happen really, really quick. We're going to turn down the studio lights so you can see more closely. and the solder flowed successfully and we're ready to quench. Here it is, fresh out of the quench cup. It looks pretty good. The triangle is thoroughly soldered and on there. Next, I will pickle it and clean it. And here is the little ring fresh out of the pickle pot. I brass brushed it and got the brass brush wet with a little bit of soap and scrubbed it up. I think it turned out pretty nice. Here are a bunch of rings. These are just simple, plain, round wire rings like we did in the first section of class. These are the textured and stamped round wire rings. I think turned out great. Now these two you haven't seen yet. These are using our thin rings, which are already made for you, and then adding texture using the nine face texturing hammer. And then this one just has little stars with a little period stamp between each star. Then there are the rings that we've added the solder, bowl to, solder bowls to. These ones are the solder bowls and they worked great. I want to talk a little bit about this one. This is our small classic heart. It's not a solderable. It has, it's, it's a little bit larger. So I actually had to create a little curve in the heart so that it had surface to surface touch with the ring. I did that by squeezing it with the ring bending plier. Also remember, sterling silver charms are a great addition to stacked rings. You can just trim off the loop and solder them straight on. One last thing, stamping is a great little detail to add 
to the front of these little, these little solder bowls and blanks. You could do an initial or a design, it'd be really cute.